Well, welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and as all of you know, unless some of you just tuned in, we're talking about Jim and Kathleen's history from as far back as you can remember, and now we've worked our way all the way up to, well, we're about 1981, and um, praise God. And so then, in 1981, we bought a, a van from some people. It was a, a Ford van, uh, you know, that would carry a lot of people. What they had done, they put benches in it so they could carry a little over 20 people. And it was beautiful blue, and it had a beautiful printing on each side that said, Jesus is Lord. I mean, it was state-of-the-art. It was an eye-catcher. And so we bought that van and uh, began to travel with it. And of course, uh, we had tried homeschooling, and <laughs> that didn't go over very big. Neither Kathleen and I were, were um, called to do that. Let's put it that way. But we had hired a young lady who was working for us, Sarah Jurek. And so Sarah Jurek, um, who um, used to be a nun, <laughs> and then left the nunnery <laughs> and went to work for us. And, and so she, she was happy to teach the kids. So we had the children with us and Sarah Jurek and myself and Kathleen all traveling in this van. And there's, we can figure out, we must have traveled for a whole year in it from the um, sometime to, uh, fall of 81 to 82, somewhere in there. And uh, then we came back to Broken Arrow and we rented a home on the golf course in Broken Arrow. And that would have been about 1983. Well, 1983. Well, how about 82? That's what I meant to say. Yeah, 82, not 83. All right, so 1981 to 82. Then we came back to Broken Arrow, rented that house on the golf course. But then also in 82, I had another one of my trips, you know, month at a time, four times a year, overseas. And this time, again, it's Finland. And uh, we did a lot of work in Finland, the first part there. And then eventually we ended up in the Soviet Union uh, through Finland. And Finland opened the door to Israel too. But right now I'm in Finland again, and uh, I'm praying, and there's just some things I'm seeking God about. And uh, as this could be the time that Kathleen was attending the Winter Bible Seminary, and uh, Brother Higgins said, I have a word for Jim Caseman, but I believe he's not here. Someone could take the message to him. And of course, then she called me, and that would have been uh, in the morning then, my time, and uh, told me about it and shared what, Brother Higgin had said, and then at that same time or that same morning, as I recall, uh, I got this impression, uh, well, I said to the Lord, the people of Finland now have heard the word of faith, you know, and they're learning and they're hungry, but we need, they need to have Brother Higgin's books in, of, on faith in Finnish, and I was going to, you know, print them, and then just like that, the Holy Spirit just checked me in my spirit, and just like an audible voice almost, he says, no, the Finnish people will print, will take up that project and do it themselves. I want AFCM, I want you to print Brother Hagen's books in the Russian language, 3.3 million. That's 3,300,000 books of Brother Hagen's. Wow. Well, I shared it with the Finnish people. They were excited to take up the project. Matter of fact, they started a, a publishing company. And they started printing all of Brother Higgins books in Finnish and other faith preachers as well. So, that, and, and they were selling the books and, and keeping, were able to keep the company going that way. So that worked out really nice. To my knowledge, they're still at it today. But, now I'd never printed books. I didn't know where to start. This is a big project. It's gonna take some money. And this is 1982. I'm dragging my feet, I don't know where or how. And then a, a friend of mine, uh, we've graduated from Raymond at the same time. He said, I believe that, it, well, why don't you have a missions conference? I believe that if you ask Brother Hagan to speak at your missions conference, he'll do it. Well, I was a little nervous about asking Brother Hagan to do that. But then finally, I did, and he agreed to do it. And David Ingalls was going to come with him and uh, lead the praise and worship. 
And so what we did, we rented a, uh, the Baptist church in downtown Minneapolis, Minnesota that, uh, for the conference. And uh, the conference then was January 1983. And, and as I recall, we had something like 1,200 people show up. And so for the first night of the conference, I just simply shared with them that I was over in Finland and this is what God told me to do. That's all I did. We didn't take an offering for the books or anything like that because I really didn't know how much money it was going to cost us. As it turned out, it turned out, you know, years, a few a couple of years later, um, you know, we were running right around a million dollars. And of course, the biggest expense was smuggling. But here we are at the conference. I didn't ask for money or anything. Now, Brother Hagen is here. So the next day, I figured, well, we better have a luncheon with our pastors, with Brother Hagen. So the next day, we had this luncheon. Now, before Brother Hagen could up and speak, pastor friend next to me said, could I, could I share something before Brother Hagen gets up? Well, I knew this pastor. I didn't knew there was not going to be a problem. At least I didn't think. And so he said this. He says, last night we heard Brother Caseman share about the project, the Russian project. And uh, I think we should put some money to our, to our mouth. With our mouth. And, and of course, the churches at that time were, were, were small. And this is 1983. And, and he said, my church is going to give $5,000 towards this project. Now, today, that would be like, my church is going to give 50000 And, of course, right like that, another pastor jumped up. We're going to do one better than that. We're going to give $5,001. And another one jumped up. We'll do better than that. We'll do $5,003. And I'm getting embarrassed. What is Brother Hagen thinking? And just like that, Brother Hagen gets up and he said, this is God. And, and it kept going, and a note was passed up to me from the end of the table, up to me, and I look at it. And it is, uh, it's a note from uh, one of my board members, it, but he wasn't there, it was his wife. And, uh, of course, and, and of course, I can say it now, I suppose, it was, it was Alice Nagley. And she sent a note, and she said, I believe, I'll have to talk to my husband, but I believe we're good for a hundred thousand dollars oh my goodness that would be like a million dollars today i suppose and and so that ended and then that night then they asked for an offering for the book project and by the time that conference is over with we had two hundred and fifty thousand dollars cash to get started with the project wow well, I needed some help because immediately I'm getting people saying, you need to do this dialect, that dialect, this dialect. And I don't know how many dialects there are in Russia. It's just like in the United States, I suppose. And so then it, it was brought to my attention that uh, Jerry O'Dell, he used to work for, uh, um, he used to work for, uh, <laughs> it'll come to me in a second. I don't know why I would miss that one. And uh, he would work, work for, well, it'll come. But it really, it was a big ministry at that time in Africa. You know, there'd be, it would be, they would have a million people at one, conf, at one gathering and, and just people getting saved. And, and, uh, and I can't believe that, uh, that I, well, anyway, I'll, the name will come back to me. And he used to work for that big ministry. And... Um, Osborne, there it is, T.L. Osborne. He worked for T.L. Osborne. And uh, so then, and he was doing his books. And so then I went to talk to him and he helped me tremendously. We just picked one dialect. He said, take that one dialect, the one that was most common. And he said, go for that. Praise God. And a, and a woman working for the Hagans was in the next desk or something. She heard me. She called me later and wanted to go to work for us. And uh, we'll talk about her later. All right. We need to move on. We'll see you the next session.